What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here and we're continuing on with the quickest fastest Revit 2019 beginner free online course and this will be the last part so I'm just going to do some final touches. We're going to be creating a room schedule, we're also going to uh, kind of be setting up all of the views, the 3D views, the, the floor plan and just making some adjustments to make everything lo look that bit nicer but before i get started i would just like to ask you to like this tutorial it helps me out a lot and if you haven't already i suggest you subscribe because i make tutorials like this every day and if you want to download this project file as soon as i'm done with this tutorial it will be uploaded on my patreon first link in the description where for only five dollars a month you can get access to all of my Revit project files so you can kind of take a look at what they uh, look like on your own computer Okay, let's get into the tutorial. So here's the house that we've been working for for the last like eight tutorials or eight videos. And uh, this is what we've got. And if I go here to lower level here, we've got to set up our room legend. For the entry level, I didn't do a room legend, but uh, if you followed the lower level tutorial, you can do that one yourself. But now let's extract some information from this room legend. For example, if I go over here and select this room, so notice that I didn't uh, select this room tag. I went over here and selected this little X sign. So if I select that, I can go here to the properties panel and I can scroll down and here we've got some information about this room. We've got the area, the perimeter, uh, the unbound bound height, uh, stuff like that. Uh, so uh, we've got some information here in the properties panel, but that's really not a way that you would access information in Revit. You would like to kind of categorize it in form of a some sort of a schedule. So how do you create that uh, room schedule or pretty much any schedule in Revit? Well, for that, you need to go here to the view ta tab and find your schedule. So here it says schedules. You just click on that and it opens up this little drop menu and it says schedule quantities. So that's the one you want to use if you're using something like this, uh, like rooms then you've got this graphical columns uh, schedule and we've got material takeoffs that's for materials and maybe calculating the price but for now on just for this room uh, schedule let's uh, create just a regular schedule now first you need to choose uh, which category you want to uh, you want to schedule and here you can select that will be an architectural category structural mechanical for this in this instance where we're doing only rooms uh, maybe you could select just the architectural but it's okay just leave them all checked it doesn't really matter it mat it's it's only important that here for category you choose the right one so i'm just going to scroll down a bit until i get to rooms and as you can see here it says rooms and uh, the name can be just a room schedule uh, revit automatically gives you a name and you can just uh, hit OK. Then you get this uh, schedule properties dialog. So this basically allows you to uh, customize your schedule. So it will be a room schedule, but what information would you like to extract from all of those rooms? So uh, as you remember here in the properties panel, we can find the area, the perimeter, the name, the number of the room. So maybe it would make sense uh, to choose some of those options. So let's start off with the name of the room. Uh, now you can select it here and just hit this little add parameter. parameter button or for for example for the number I'm just going to double click and it uh, automatically moves it from these this available fields into scheduled fields so everything you have over here those will be those little fields in your schedule let's see what else can we find maybe level so you know on which level your uh, your rooms are uh, in this case it doesn't really make any sense because they're all on a lower level but if we did a uh, if we did rooms for the upper level then it would maybe make sense to so you can see on which level your rooms are maybe we can go up here yeah of course area that's something that's important uh, the perimeter uh, let's use that one as well and let's see yeah, I guess we can say this is enough for the for this schedule and uh, then uh, you just hit OK. And here you go, you've got your schedule. So it says the name of the room, it says uh, here the number of the room and here you've got uh, on which level of the room is placed 
and uh, here we've got your area and your parameter. Now notice that here we have this room one and it says not placed, not placed, not placed. So what does that mean? That's the one that I've uh, shown you uh, in the beginning when I was placing rooms. We did kind of one room and then I explained why uh, we can't place a room like that. So it's al already created that room but it didn't really place it. So we need to really remove this from the schedule. So you can just select one of these uh, fields, maybe this not, uh, not placed and go here and click delete and just hit OK and now you're only left with the actual rooms in your uh, in your model. Now I'm, I'm really not happy with the way this is categorized for example first it starts off from number two so you can change that actually in the schedule you don't have to go back to the floor plan and uh, change there you can go here and maybe change a living room to number one uh, this room to number two this will be number three this will be number four and this will be number five Okay, so we've got that, but uh, for example, here the number is second, but the name is first. Maybe we would like to flip that or maybe make some changes. So how do you edit the, these fields? You, well, you can go over here and find fields. And uh, here we've got sorting and grouping filter. And uh, let's go with just fields and it opens up this whole schedule so you can kind of toggle between all of these. So let's go to fields first and uh, here, as you can see, see uh, it goes from name, number, level, area, parameter and here name number level area parameter so uh, you really need to change this order over here so you just go to number and you move it up and then for the level let's move it down uh, below the parameter okay so I'm happy with that but I want to make some additional changes so for example it's going here uh, by number which uh, can make sense of course but maybe you would like to uh, have a schedule where it starts with the biggest room and then goes down to the smallest room so for that you can go here to uh, sort by and here you can go by area and you just hit OK and as you can see over here it start, started from the smallest one and then it goes up to the biggest living room over here. And first we get the number, then we get the name, then the area, the perimeter, and then the level on which is on. So you can play around with these settings and get the schedule you would like to export later on for your project. Okay, let's go back and do some graphics, something much more interesting than this boring scheduling. So let's go maybe to... Okay, here we're at level one and as you can see it's quite... Uh, ugly like this with this terrain and these signs so you uh, really want to format this for printing so let's maybe select this uh, room uh, legend and place it over there maybe we can select it and just using the arrow keys I'm kind of moving it a bit closer so yeah let's say I'm, I'm happy with this now let's see uh, how much of this will appear on a sheet of paper so to place this uh, and prepare for this for printing you need to scroll down over here and you've got your sheets uh, your sheets button and you just right click on that and you go new sheet now as you can see here we've only got uh, a zero metric which is not something I, I would like to use because it's too large for this small house so let's go to load and here in your library scroll all the way down and find title blocks and here you can choose a3 metric at least this is what I'm going to choose if you're using imperial units or maybe you can use some of your imperial paper sizes but for now I'm just going to use this one so just go OK and then you select it over here and you go OK again and here we go this is your title block now of course you can change this this is the one that comes with Autodesk I've got a tutorial on that as well so just search Balkan architect title block in Revit and you'll find the solution but uh, let's place this floor plan over here. So if I go here to lower level and kind of place it like this, as you can see, uh, it's too large. It's bigger than the actual uh, paper, uh, paper size. So I'm just going to select it and delete it for now and go back to lo uh, lower level and let's just extract uh, or isolate only the part we want to show. So I'm just going to scroll down and turn on crop view as well as crop region visible. Hit apply and as you can see, you've got this little crop uh, window and you can actually move it around a bit and you can make it smaller and there you go. So now we've got our room legend and our house in view and that's pretty much the only thing we see. And here for this crop window, if you want to see it, just leave this checked. And if you don't want to see it, I think it looks a bit better when you uncheck this, hit apply. And as you can see, this is our floor plan now. I think it looks a lot better. So now you scroll down and you find your sheets. You open this up, this button, this plus sign. It wasn't there before, before we had this. 
this little sheet and just double click on that one. Now you scroll all the way up, find your lower, lower level and you just drag it over and you place it. And as you can see, now it's perfectly placed over here. And here you get this little uh, annotation that says a lower level. You can select the whole thing and here in the properties panel, you can change this to maybe no title if you don't want anything or maybe to title only without that line. I actually like the, the line. so. I just leave it like that and here you've got your scale and of course you can change your scale you just need to go back to lower level and you just open up this little thing up and here you can change the scale if that is something you like to do okay and finally the the best part the thing that everybody loves to do let's set up the 3d view that's always interesting to everybody so let's go to 3d view one this is the, the one we already created and let's adjust it a bit and for that let's use this uh, little 3d wheel so navigation wheel you select it and you get this cool little wheel that kind of follows your mouse in a weird fashion so and i am just going to kind of place it in the middle and go here to look and then I'm going just, just going to position it. So basically it's like I'm moving my head around. And now I'm just going to hit exit. Then I'm going to move this up a bit, this down a bit, just to get the, the proportions that I would like for this view. And let's make some adjustments now. So first I'm going to turn on shadows. So here you can go shadows on, and there you go, it looks a lot better. And of course you can go into lower level and turn on shadows. Uh, but uh, usually uh, in floor plans they don't look really good, maybe entry level yeah this is what that would look like but uh, it usually doesn't look, really look good in plans maybe uh, maybe in uh, these elevations uh, it can make sense but uh, in, in floor plans usually it's just just silly so let's go back to our 3d view one okay this already looks a lot better so now you can go over here into graphic display options and maybe you can change some elements around so maybe you can change this to uh, realistic hit apply and as you can see now it's realistic but because we didn't uh, really set up the materials so i wouldn't really do realistic so let's uh, uh leave the hidden line for now then uh, let's go to shadows and let's add some ambient shadows hit apply and as you can see it kind of gives it a bit more depth and of course you can go into lighting and uh, maybe bring the these hard shadows down a bit uh, let me move this up yeah as you can see so this uh, just those hard shadows it just changes like the the lightness maybe a bit harder yeah okay i prefer this look and of course you can change the sun uh, which kind of makes and this ambient light which kind of makes everything a bit lighter but i'm just going to leave it at what it was okay so i'm uh, happy with this so i can just uh, hit okay and now we can set up this actual uh, view size so if you select uh, this little uh, kind of a crop window uh, you can go here and it says uh, size crop so this allows you to set the dimensions of this little 3d view so if you select this uh, because we don't have any uh, scale as you can see here where it uh, would say 1 to 100 or whatever scale you're working with it just says perspective so you need to set up the size of this window so now the width is 150 millimeters and the height is 88 so i'm just going to select this scale so it uh, proportionately uh, makes it larger or smaller and let me just uh, do uh, 253, hit apply. Okay, so nothing changed, but uh, the actual thing is a, a lot larger. So if we place it on a sheet, it will look larger. So if I go here to the sheet, right click and uh, maybe duplicate view, or no, I can't duplicate, but I can just right click here and go new sheet, A3 metric and go okay. Find my 3D view one, drag it over, place it and there we go so we can see our uh, cool looking 3d view and just to make it a bit more interesting let's add some planting so let's go to our site plan so just there site plan and as you can see as you remember we're probably looking for from at the house from this angle so let's just go here to massing and site site component and let's add one large tree over here maybe one here in the background and now if we go back to that sheet as you can see now we've got a couple of trees here and it looks a bit better and of course we've got this uh, ugly outline this crop view so that's something i like to turn off even in 3d views so just scroll down here in the properties uh so the that's crop region visible yeah and as you can see now it looks a lot better and let's go back and actually for these 3d views i don't think we need this 3d view one everybody knows this is a 3d view so let's just select it and hit here no title 
Okay, so this looks a lot better. And actually it's kind of small uh, right now, so let's make it a bit larger. So 3D view one, uh, let's select a crop region visible, select this crop region, uh, go scale, and let's change this to 300, apply, okay, uncheck, uh, uncheck this crop region visible, go back into our sheet, and as, as you will see, it automatically made it larger. So now you can go straight and print this, or you can export it to PDF, and how do you do that? You go here to file, uh, you go to print, and then here select just Adobe PDF, and here you can uh, browse and save it maybe on your desktop, and uh, just go OK, save it, then you set up the dimensions, so you go over here and you just make sure that it's A3 landscape, and the quality is high, let's just hit OK, and then we go preview, just to see, OK. Uh, okay, here's the preview, OK, this looks really good, so we can now print, go OK, and again, just select where you want to save it, desktop, save, and it will automatically export that PDF. So you can take that to the printers and you can save it. And let's just, uh, yeah, you get a point. Okay. And this is how that will look like when it's saved as PDF. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this quickest, fastest, bestest online Revit uh, course. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like, and share this video. If you want to find this project file, check out my Patreon, first link in the description. And I will see you tomorrow with another great tutorial.